God damn. What is that? What is that? I've been trying to catch up on all my YouTube subscriptions and I was recently catching up on my friend Sweet Lou Photography and his YouTube channel. He's got all kinds of sweet photography videos. And I was going deep into the archives a little bit a couple years back and I found this one. It was the Keypix smartphone picture printer. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Basically, it takes a picture of your phone and then you roll it out and there's your picture. The best part about this thing is no batteries required. And as soon as I saw this thing, I thought two things. First, Lou, flip it upside down. Check me out, check me out. Boom, Ooh. bam, oh, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Oh! Right? I don't know why the pictures all show it with the phone on top. It seems so much easier to work with. Just shut the lights off low so there's no reflections. And we'll get to that later. The other thought, the main thought was, this thing's a camera. Not only is it a camera, but it's taking a photo four inches away from the lens, which means it's gonna have a really thin uh, focal range. It's a macro instant film camera for about $35. So of course I had to pick one up. And you can check the link in the description to watch Lou's full video review of this unit and what it's supposed to do. I'm just gonna use this as a camera. So let's see what we got here. Pretty straightforward, just load the film into it, roll out the dark slide, and let's take a picture. I have some cool stickers my friend Chris sent over. These things are amazing, create impact. Just another Chris YouTube channel, you can check his link out as well in the description of this video. But let's see here. So I guess what we'll do is just set this up, kind of average out my range here and snap a photo. And here it is. It worked. <laughs> it worked. First try. It's a macro instant film camera. And at the time of making this video, it only cost about $35. So check the link in the description for that camera. I would order one because when people find out what this thing can do, hopefully the price doesn't go up, but it might. So snag one now while you can. Let's get some more photos. So I'll grab my little Matchbox custom Mirthmobile from Wayne's World. What, you don't know the Mirthmobile? Okay. So we're gonna set this up, snap a picture. Excellent. I'll snag another one. Okay. All right, excellent. Excellent. I'm only a few photos into this, and look at this. This is a camera that doesn't have a viewfinder. It has a lot of limitations, which to me make it way more fun to use, especially as a macro camera, just because you're seeing stuff on instant film that you normally wouldn't see because these cameras typically have a focal range of about three feet minimum. So the fact that we're just seeing instant photos of macro things is already cool enough. Let's grab this little go make something pins and I'll try to range this in snap that you can see here okay a little out of focus not a big deal that's one good thing with film photography even when you're slightly out of focus it still has a nice aesthetic or look at least in my opinion that's still acceptable especially when it's on instant film but i would like to get that dialed in perfectly and as i was taking pictures of this pop figure i realized why don't i just put a little marker here with some tape and then I'll know exactly where my focal range is. That was a simple little upgrade. And I'll talk about some other things I've learned later in this video. So if you're interested, keep watching. I got some cool little tricks that I learned. One being this little piece of tape. Totally helped, changes everything. Now we're getting somewhere. Now this is actually looking pretty good because you can see here the focus, this is probably one of the sharpest ones so far. Now that we're in true hipster mode, it would only make sense to take some pictures of some food. So out getting some wings. Let's snap a photo. I took the unit with me and it's it's pretty big. I mean, this is the size of a typical Instax mini camera. <laughs> Pull this thing out, use my phone for some light and snap a picture. And here it is. Look at that, huh? Yes, that turned out pretty good. That isn't the actual photo though. This is what the actual photo looked like. Yeah, it was way too underexposed. This picture was my safety photo that I took. I took this with my phone, brought the thing home, scanned it in and used the unit for what it was meant to be used for and just took a picture off my phone. Now, of course, it wasn't as fun, but that's what makes this so unique. It's actually made to do this and take those instant photos off your phone. So you can always shoot safety shots if you really wanna to try to capture some stuff and you're afraid you might miss it when you're out on the field. 
So let's just keep having some more fun here. So I want to snap some photos here and crank them on out. What, you don't have a crank? You're a macro Instax mini photographer and you don't have a crank? <laughs> okay. It's just got weird like roller marks all over it. In Lou's video review, he mentioned that you could see these roller marks. And I was noticing that I was seeing some of these same roller marks in my photos as well. And I think that's because the way the unit works, as you wind it, your hand stops and you have to reposition it to recrank it to continue that roll. And every time that stops, the chemical is stopping as it slides across. But one thing I did notice after about 10 to 20 minutes, all of those marks went away. And even in the really dark images, I noticed that I couldn't even see those roller marks that he was describing in his video. That got me thinking maybe the crank would help it keep it consistent like an electric motor, how it pushes through the rollers. You can just roll those rollers smooth, right? Now this was just an experimental crank. I'm sure there's some 3D printer creative people out there that could just make a sweet crank that would work perfectly on this. And if you do end up making one of those, I'll just put a link to it in the description so those of you that want one can go get one there. In the meantime, I decided to make one out of wood. And that didn't work out so well, so I decided to make one out of popsicle sticks. And I was just not gonna, I don't wanna glue all this stuff. So I decided to go back to some roots. I have tons of PVC pipe. This is half inch schedule 40 PVC. I got tons of it from the old days of making PVC camera rigs and things. So my idea was if I heat up the end, I slide it over, let it cool down, put my PVC pipe crank together and I'll be done. Now the thing I didn't think about is that when I heat this thing up, it's hot plastic and I'm sliding it onto plastic, which is a bad idea. The thing almost got stuck. I decided to put some paper over the crank and that way when the hot PVC slides over it, as it cools down, the paper will allow it to slide off and sure enough, it worked. Put my little corner piece here, another little corner piece, and now we have a crank. And it works, it's a little bulky. I definitely think a 3D printed version would be amazing. But until then, I wanted to try this one. And from all the photos I took, it seems to work perfectly. I don't notice any roller marks or anything. So I'm gonna wind this backwards because there is film in this, but the thing to be very careful of if you do make a crank for this, and you'll feel it when you develop your first film, it hits a stopping point when that film's ejected. If you over crank this, you're gonna shoot out another slide of film and you don't wanna do that. So as you're winding it, you're gonna wait, you're gonna feel for it, and it's gonna it's gonna give a little bit of tension, and that's when you know to stop, and you can just do that last part by hand. And that's just something to be careful of if you do decide to make your own crank. Let's crank out some more photos here. I was at the workshop, so I wanted to experiment a little bit. I snapped a photo of this boat with the little ribbies. And this one still is a little underexposed, but I think it looks really cool just because of the texture of that aluminum, the bottom side of that boat. So I was happy with that one. I tried some stuff out in the sunlight. I tried to take a photo of this tire. It was way too bright. The shadowy side of the truck snapped a photo there, and this one turned out pretty good. You can see yours. Uh, I tried a wide shot here at the shop. Did not work at all. I just wanted to see what it would look like. I'm experimenting. Try to take a picture of these fish here. Didn't quite get it. Brought the light over. Mm, no, didn't work. You win some, you lose some, not a big deal. Over the course of the last few days, I was experimenting, trying to take all kinds of photos. The sunlight was out, so I went and took some photos here with this little bubble maker. I thought it'd be so cool to get some shots of the bubbles. Like, when do you ever see focused bubbles in an instant photo, right? It did not work. This is what it looked like. It's not a big deal. I gave it a try, though. But this is how it turned out when I uh, took a picture off my phone. And I just filmed a little bit of it and took some pictures with my phone with the thing running. And then I find the picture that I want. This one looks pretty good. I'll kind of crop in here, set it up, take the picture, and there you go. Look at that. But these close-ups here of the actual bubble blower <laughs> look pretty cool. And you took these with the camera. And that's when I learned that holding a little ND filter in front of the lens actually does knock down the light exposure. Durr. I don't know what I was thinking. That's another little trick that you could try. If you're gonna take this outside, just take some of your lens ND filters or maybe even a pair of sunglasses and just pull the lens in front of your lens and it'll knock down some of that light. And you can see here, it did work. Now, the direct sunlight on this telephone pole was still just a little too bright for the ND filter that I had, but this other photo here, that turned out really awesome. I think that's one of my favorite ones so far. That one and this one right here. And of course, all these have their own uniqueness to them. I think it's so cool that this camera is actually a picture printer. 
So you can take photos off your phone, but you can also experiment and use it as a real macro camera. It's the best of both worlds, because if you're a beginner and you don't really want to spend a lot of money, because the film does start to add up really quick. You could take a bunch of pictures on your phone, and then you find one or two that you really like, and you can print them out. But if you want to get kind of crazy with the camera and use it as a macro camera, what did Bob Ross call it? Happy accidents? <laughs> yeah, that's the one of the best parts of using this as a macro camera. If you do end up getting one of these and uploading some photos, be sure to share them with me on Instagram. I'll put the link to the Instagram down below or send me a message and I would love to check out if you have a video or something. Hopefully down the road I can recap on all this and share some of the photos. I'd love to share some of the macro photography you guys come up with. So thanks for watching. Nop Top, go make something. Slide this little thing off. There you go. Got a little focus thing here. More like this. So I have it upside down. This is the right direction. Yeah. So we'll switch on the side. You to range. Flip it back. Click. <laughs> you get it. Look at that. At first, I was worried that maybe there was going to be some issues where like leak was going to happen here. But I opened it up and looked, and this is actually a little uh, billow that's rubber. And so this is just here for protection from dust and stuff. The actual photo and the film itself is all protected inside a light type seal. There you go. Now it's done.